Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hi guys. So, I've been gone on and off since November of last year, but between the last time I posted and the last time I even filmed that video, a lot has happened. And I'm finally ready to talk about it, and I'm not even, it's not even really me who's ready, it's more that I'm finally getting the answers I wanted. And this video is going to be talking about everything, about why I've been having such a hard time filming and posting and editing because the whole entire schedule for me has been wild. And it's more than just school, there's a lot more that's coming, so without further ado, I hope you guys are ready because... I've had a lot happen since Ramadan started and it has been some of the worst few weeks but alhamdulillah I'm here and I'm able to talk to you guys and we're gonna get through this so without further ado let's get started okay guys so we're gonna go back to the year 2022 because that's when I finally put on the hijab and when I finally started being outwardly Muslim. So at this time, I put it on after Ramadan. So that was the first time, you know, I was visibly Muslim. And now that I was visibly Muslim, I knew that the next year coming would be the first year that I would get to participate in Ramadan. I had begun participating in Ramadan during 2022 in secret and nobody knew. I would practice it usually when I didn't have games or when I could and basically when I didn't have practice. Nobody knew at the time that I was, you know, practicing or anything like that. So it was really fun and kind of... There was a little bit of a adrenaline rush because, you know, when you're keeping something secret, but you know you're so excited that one day you'll be able to show it to people. And so, that's, you know, the beginning. Now we're going to fast forward to 2023 because that was the first year I participated in Ramadan. Um, that Ramadan, I actually had a really tough time. And I probably should have taken that as a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see some doctors a bit sooner. That year was the first year that I was able to participate in Ramadan, and I actually did pretty good. Fasting, I had a bit of a hard time with at first because really trying to do it and really sticking to it was a bit hard for me. And I actually missed Surhur a lot more than I planned to, so I struggled a lot. And so I was able to participate in Ramadan. I knew I had days to make up. I think I had about, I want to say I had 12. And by the time it was like July, I had like maybe, uh, maybe six. But that summer was the summer I was going into college. And that summer I was able to fast a little bit and I was able to make up those days and stuff. But I had a little bit of a hard time making up my fast. And that was because after Ramadan, I had begun to experience really bad stomach issues. I always had stomach issues as a kid and that was mostly linked to my anxiety. I've always had anxiety and I still do to this day, but I really learned to cope with it a little bit better that it doesn't affect my stomach as much. So I've always had stomach issues, but it was getting to a point that I was nauseous. I was nauseous, but also really hungry, so I couldn't eat. And I was actually probably going to the bathroom every day, probably having like really good bowel movements, basically. I was having really good bowel movements. I was, I felt okay bowel movements rise like it was showing good but the reality was that without me knowing i was experiencing what i'm now experiencing now it's just there's a little difference at the time i visited my doctors and i don't i don't want to say i didn't feel heard but i was heard but not fully because i ended up here and it's 2024 so that summer i ended up they ended up telling me that i was really like I, had, I was really constipated. I had a lot of, I was having a lot of bowel movements, but my body still wasn't processing it. Now, that should have been a sign of something deeper. They did not have me see a gastro, and my kidney was inflamed. So now, at the age of 18, not even 18, technically 17, I am being told that I am having good bowel movements, but my body still is backed up and not getting it out fast enough. My body's not processing fast enough. So I'm like, okay. They had me take a bunch of Miralax, which I don't recommend doing unless you really, really need to because it can make you feel so empty. It really did not help me and it made me feel completely and it made me feel completely empty. I did not feel good. I was not feeling right. I was just, I was not feeling right, honestly. And so I basically then after that, I 
went the whole summer basically taking Miralax, taking um, no pain meds anymore because the reason they thought my kidney was inflamed was because my creatine levels were high, right? And so creatine levels are something that like have to do with, I don't exactly know how to explain but I know they have to do with your kidney. So they basically were like, okay, you know, you are, you're having these issues because of X and Y. And we're thinking, okay, so I did what they said and I felt better for a little bit. And then I got to college. Now this is the college segment. In college I got there and I had pretty good food for the first two weeks. Now I want you guys to remember that I was an athlete so, I mean I'm an athlete so being there the first two weeks the food is really good. You know we're paying for it like probably more than, we're paying for it. We're paying for the food and stuff and so, well not really us but like our program does so you know all the pre- pre-season athletes who are there we're getting really good food we're getting breakfast lunch and dinner like really good and it's like the bomb.com it's it's perfect it's amazing it's great and then the first week of school as you guys saw which you should watch that video is my first week of school and i tried not to think anything of it but Little did I know, I got food poisoning. I ate something from from our school and I got food poisoning. And we're gonna all say that anything else after this after this is all hypothetical. For so hypothetically, after this I experienced food poisoning on multitudes of occasions but it wasn't that much during season now during season when i was in season i basically was basically during season we were not eating that much from the dining hall if i'm honest i really wasn't eating much there because i'm in season we're practicing every day we're missing dinner so i'm trying to get dinner to go but i realized it wasn't really working so i really wasn't eating from our school that much and that's just the truth. This is not hypothetical. I just, that's the truth. I was not eating from our school much. And so any type of like sickness, I didn't have any. The only really bad thing I had was getting sick the first week, which hypothetically was from food poisoning, from eating a meal at the dining hall. And then we, um, then after that, you know, it was, everything else was fine for me. Everything else was good, and I was able to figure out, you know, okay, this is what I like to eat, this is what I don't like from, from the school, this is what I like in general, this is really what my body's craving, what I need as an athlete to survive, right? And so then, I basically go into November, December-ish, and that's when I was eating a little bit more. Now... I would eat from the school and still have issues. So at this point, my stomach is really just giving me a bit of a hard time. It's not really giving me too much, but it's giving me a bit of a hard time. I'm like, I'm like, I'll eat sometimes and then not even 30 minutes later, my stomach is like feeling a little, I'm feeling a little sick. So it's like, okay, like, and not even sick exactly because I wouldn't say I was vomiting or anything, but like, I just wasn't feeling right. It's like, you know, that like when your stomach's like turning, it's like you're like, we love to say our stomach churns and that's how I was feeling, right? Okay, sorry guys, I keep, I think it's back. Anyway, I don't know. So, then, here's where it gets interesting. I go home. Now, I'm telling you, I go home, guys, and the food is great. Top tier. Love my mama. Well, always pray my mama. Love her. And my mom we trust, okay? My mom makes amazing food, and that's that. I was doing great. I actually gained weight. And now, at this point, I weighed, I'm just going to say X, okay? I weighed X. X amount, right? And then... I just kept eating. I felt good enough and I was feeling really good so I was able to eat. I was able to feel good enough to to gain weight, right? Now I'm gaining weight from eating all this food. Okay guys, sorry my dad knocked on the door. Um, so, at this point I weighed X amount. And then the next semester came. I came back to college. I'm ready to go. As I told you guys, I, my goal was to be more consistent and to post more. 
and that did not happen during Ramadan. I had a whole plan for Ramadan, but, and I started planning in literally January. I left the plan for Ramadan. I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy decorations. I decorated my room. Everything was good. I had a good plan in place. I thought, oh, I've got this. And then the next semester happened. The next semester, I decided to take 17 credits. Now, mind you, the last semester I took 15 and I felt absolutely fine. So for me, taking those extra two credits didn't feel like much, if I'm honest, in my head. Now, in reality, I learned. Allah taught me a lesson, okay? Um, and I also ended up going through something in February. And yeah, I was going through some so, of that. I ended up in January getting another instance of hypothetically getting sick from food. Well, let me not say that. I got sick this next semester. When I say sick, I was dog sick. I was so sick to the point where I didn't think I'd be able to go to class. And I know you guys are like, what do you mean by that? Like, if you're sick, you shouldn't go to class. My stomach hurt, but I can still function usually because I have a very high pain tolerance. If you guys didn't know, I broke my leg and breaking my leg i learned you know how much pain i'm able to tolerate and i can tolerate quite a lot before i didn't even cry really when i broke my leg to be fair i had a lot of adrenaline but check out that story because i talk a lot about it and so basically for this semester i was getting sick i got sick on a multitude of occasions and when i say a multitude at least up to 10 to 12 times I'm honestly going to say 15 because I feel like 15 is really where it's at. Because I was able to record the number on my phone. And 10... Oh, wait. I forgot for an extra four. Okay. So, yeah. Technically, around 15 to 20 days, I was getting really sick. I was getting food poisoning. Okay? End of story. I was getting food poisoning from eating certain foods from a certain place. Right? And this certain place, I couldn't really get away from. And so, it was just like I would just not want to eat. It was to a point where... I just didn't want to eat so I was eating out a lot and that was not probably good for my stomach but neither was getting food poisoning. So it just felt like a lose-lose situation and it started to get worse as I got into February. January wasn't that bad but February is when I really felt the hit. I mean happy Black History Month y'all I guess. Like I got the best of it. Like I basically was so sick that I was just not showing up to class. Like I would have to have my, my friends would text me and be like, hey, are you all right? People from my class would be like, yo, are you like actually good? Are you sure you're all right? You've been sick a lot. And a lot, and my friends know, a lot of people know that when I say I'm sick and I can't come into class, I'm really sick. I'm not just gonna miss class to miss it. I missed class on purpose one time this semester, but the amount I missed was crazy. Now you have to think, we only go to class four days a week. We don't have Friday classes. So it doesn't seem that bad all in like, total but the truth is is that you missing class can really harm you and so february comes and i go home and after getting food poisoning by the time i'm just like okay maybe if that's good when i'm home but i was still getting sick actually i ended up getting sick again for two days i just did i couldn't eat like i was so nauseous and so i couldn't eat and I didn't realize at the time, but that's when I'm pretty sure I started. That's probably when I, around the time when I started losing weight. Um, because the X amount that I weighed, I ended up losing a lot. I mean, I might not look it on camera, but I know for a fact, and a lot of people have told me, and my friends even told me, they're like, you do look. I can see it. I can definitely see it, because without my hijab, I definitely can see it. I, yeah, so. But then, it didn't even get that bad. To the point where I felt the need to see a doc. Well, actually, let me not lie. I wanted to see a doctor. I asked my nurse a couple of times, can I see a gastro? I was getting to the point right before I went home, I kept trying to see if I could see a gastro. So I decided when I was home, I was like, I'm going to see somebody. Mind you, I was only there for a week. I was able to get one appointment in, but I was like, okay, I'm not going to be able to see somebody. So I got back. And I kept waiting because I kept forgetting. I was like, oh, shoot. I was like, I got to go to the nurse. I got to ask for this, like this thing. And it took, fine though it finally took till I got to Ramadan. Ramadan, it makes I will explain this. I felt great while fasting. Now there is an actual explanation about this that I've been learning more about, but I felt really good fasting. My body felt good. I felt energized. I felt like my body, my stomach wasn't hurting. My body was processing. Like I actually felt really good. I liked fasting. It felt like I was like, oh, I can do this more often. 
And so, then it got to Ramadan, as I said before. And we're midway through Ramadan and I got my period. Now, at this time, I had an appointment. My appointment in February was about my period. It was about getting something to help with my periods. And it was the first period since then. And so I basically, ever since I had my appointment for that and like I started something new, my period was gonna take a second. So I had a really painful period. I was on my period for 12 days, crazy. Um, 12 craziest days of my life. But right as I'm getting off of it, I got sick again. But this time it was, the worst sickness I had ever felt. Worse than the flu, worse than COVID. And COVID, I couldn't breathe, y'all. I was on, I had to get an inhaler. For this, I couldn't heat for four days straight. I was only able to consume the smallest bit of anything, maybe like this much of something. And I'm having to go to class? No. I didn't go to class for those four days. Starting on, I think, a Sunday. So Sunday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday. Saturday, Sunday. Saturday night, I got sick. Monday, I was, Sunday, I was sick. Monday and Tuesday. Mind you, I'm all going through some other stuff. So I'm having to show up to stuff still. Even though I'm not in class, still having to show up to stuff. And I'm sick as a dog. And the only reason, actually, funny enough, that I finally reminded myself to see the nurse was because my hands started tingling. And that was it for me. I don't know why that pushed me over the edge, y'all, but I'm telling you, my hands are tingling. Like, they're about to go numb. And after being that sick, I was like, there's, there has to be something wrong because it is more than just, I, and also I want to say in between this, right before us, I did go to the nurse and she wouldn't give me the, the, um, she didn't give me the referral. She said, try probiotics. So I did, but that made me more sick. So I stopped taking it. In fact, from those probiotics, I just, I was throwing up more i was sick my stomach hurt even more so i stopped taking them okay so then i'm finally like okay this i can't keep doing this i'm like i can't i can't keep going on and getting sick god knows when and not knowing what i can and can't eat so i finally got the referral and I see this doctor and they do a bunch of tests and they're taking my blood, they're testing me for a bunch of things and we learn a couple things. My kidney was inflamed. Yes, just like 2023, my kidney pain was real and it was because it was inflamed. Now this time my creatine levels weren't up but it still was inflamed. So I was given medication to do that and I'm still taking them. At least at the time of filming this. So, I take these meds, but I also learned my white blood count's low, which is a sign of either an infection, and they said it also means I will have a harder time fighting off infection. So, I have to stay away from people more. I, I wish I could be lying. My white blood count's low and my kidney's inflamed, and for my gastro stuff, they sent me to a gastrologist. Now I go to these gastrologists and I want to point this out because I think it's really important that these doctors were female and people might be like that doesn't make a difference but I'm telling you it does because these female like mostly female based gastros I think they're fem mostly female based they literally helped me so much I finally felt heard. And I explained to them I'm like Here's my issues. I'm vomiting. I'm nauseous. I'm all this. And they go, okay, I have a list of things it could be, but we're going to do an endoscopy. And an endoscopy basically is where they put a tube down your throat and they go and take a look in your stomach. So that's what they did. On April 9th, I was scheduled. April 9th? No. I think it was April 8th because it was the day before Eid, I think. So I'm scheduled for this endoscopy. And 
they find food still in my stomach now let me tell you at the time i'm thinking okay yeah i mean i ate really close to midnight but you know the procedure was like six to nine hours later come to find out your body is supposed to move it and you're supposed to be kind of getting rid every about four-ish hours y'all the way that I was in such shock hearing that, I was like, you've got to be kidding. Four hours, and I found this out yesterday, actually, not yesterday, two days ago, because after that endoscopy, I basically learned that I have, they're like, here's what we think you have. And I'm not going to say what it is. I'm probably going to come back later, after May 1st. I have an appointment May 1st, too. But... I basically, from right around the endoscopy also, I want you guys to know, when I say I was seeing doctors every other day, I think I had appointments every three days at least with something. A CT, uh, I, had, I had a blood test, I had a urine test, I had um, an ultrasound, I had a CT scan, I had MR, like I had everything done for my stomach. And I'm telling you that they found these things and when they told me what they thought I had I looked it up of course and I'm looking this up and I'm like what no then I read more and I'm like that would make so much sense and I wanted to start crying because after a year I'm finally feeling heard and getting these tests done and so I saw after that endoscopy I basically was okay for a little bit but then the week before the week the last week of class came by and every day i woke up guys i'm not even gonna lie to you for that whole entire week every day i woke up nauseous and i either vomited or was so nauseous i couldn't eat and i was getting no sleep because it's our last week of class i'm having to turn on project after project and so that entire week i was not feeling good and that all led up to the sorry i'm looking at my calendar the 20th april 20th I had an AKA event. Oh my god. I'm gonna bleep that. Actually, no. Okay, guys. So, I became an AKA while also being sick. Very sick. And that video is coming to you guys soon. But I was so sick at the time that I couldn't even function. And my camera had issues. But I'm gonna get you guys a video of that, I promise. But I became an AKA, and so yes, we did have an AKA event. It was community service, it was really fun, you know. And so, we had that event and then I had work that day. I go to work and I'm telling you, my legs, I, I felt good and then all of a sudden I felt dizzy and my legs basically were about to give out and I had to sit down and lay down because I nearly passed out, basically. My speech was slow. I was on the ground. They they had to call 911 because I couldn't drive myself. I I didn't feel good. And shout out to my managers. But you guys don't know where I work. But shout out to my managers. Because one of them took me to the ER. And I'm forever grateful and thankful for them. Because they took me to the ER. And there I was able to get some more help. And they basically were like, yeah. That's pretty much what we're seeing too we're seeing that you probably have this and you basically have this but we need to do a test to figure out how long your body's taking to like do this and basically what we have figured out is that my body has a hard time my stomach has a hard time processing things hi guys so it's me now i'm obviously in a different day a different like set of makeup obviously but it has been a few days since my gastric emptying test and they have now been able to figure out that what i have is called gastroparesis now gastroparesis as i've been able to find is called basically another term for delayed gastric emptying so this means that the food that is in my stomach is not being released to go to the other parts of my body and i'm pretty sure that next is the small intestine you guys can correct me if i'm wrong i'm not exactly sure i don't really know biology like that i'm a fashion major okay i i'm not meant for this science stuff but yeah so basically it means that my body is delaying emptying out the content so it makes it really hard for me to eat and things like that which cause some of my symptoms such as the nausea 
the nausea, the dizziness, like vomiting, like all those other things. And it basically explains everything. Now, it has said that constipation and things like that can make it a lot worse. So that might have been a symptom that I had, but it's not exactly from this that can be something else but it is kind of an explanation and so now I will have to be living with gastroparesis and I've learned that there are many in different ways and I will take you guys through that as I'm able to basically you know find things because I've learned that there's so many different ways that you can deal with it and as of right now I'm going to be taking some meds and I'm also probably going to be well not probably this is the part that I've definitely followed through with so far and that's eating differently I will now have to be doing smaller proportions of meals instead of bigger ones now I know that some people are able to do two big meals but for me that's just not like what's best for me I know my body and I know the way I work and I just need those you know smaller portions and then that gives me a lot more energy is what I've noticed so I really like that and so yeah I'm so incredibly grateful for all the doctors who have been here for me throughout my entire journey because it honestly means the world and I feel like you guys should make sure that if you are not feeling well, you know, but you've had doctors who are really there to take care of you, you know, make sure you thank them and appreciate them because I know that it is so hard, you know, on these people to watch us go through all these tough things, but they do their best and I'm so incredibly grateful to all the people who've helped me get through this. But yeah, so they were finally able to diagnose me with gastroparesis and now... And so now, let's get back to the video where I talk about some of the other stuff that I've also been going through. So, they basically think that I have Z. We're going to call it Z. Cause, and at this time, also, I ended up realizing, they ended up realizing when I told them, I was like, oh, I should weigh this much. And they were looking at it, and they were like, huh? Because I had lost, and I still have lost, 12 pounds, 12 to 15 pounds. And I didn't realize how much that is until somebody, like, my parents were like, and I was like, yeah, I can tell I've lost that weight. I've lost around 12 to 15 pounds and I feel a lot thinner than before. I feel quite thin compared to before. Things fit me differently and I'm still in pain. So, basically, we realized that, oh no, this can't be good. And they're like, at the ER, they're like, okay, we're going to pump you with, you know, pain meds and get you hydrated and all these things. And so that helps for a little bit. But I was able to come home and get a doctor's appointment on April 24th. And on April 24th, they then said the same thing. We're pretty sure that's what you have. Looking at these scans, looking at your endoscopy, looking at X, Y, and Z, all these things. So now I'm in the process of finally figuring out what's wrong with my stomach. But me talking about this honestly doesn't make it seem like it's that bad. But I also don't like to scare people. And the truth is that I felt miserable. I wasn't going to class. I was I couldn't lift things. I couldn't do things that I wanted to do. I couldn't eat out with my friends. I still don't have a, I still have a hard time eating. I don't know what I can and can't eat. I'm eating the safest foods I can. I'm eating applesauce for breakfast, a small thing pouch like maybe this size because I'm so terrified to eat because I would eat and I could feel it coming right back up not even an hour or two later. And it, it's been really hard to do YouTube because of that. I've tried to film, but I don't have the energy to to edit. And then my computer's been also acting wonky, and my storage has been weird. So it's just been a lot. I became an AKA, which is one of the most beautiful, grateful things I have to be a part of this illustrious sisterhood, alhamdulillah, and for me to find peace and happiness. But during Ramadan, it basically all went down. I got so sick and I haven't been the same. I knew that I was having stomach issues but I didn't think it was this bad and now I'm stuck with something that honestly might not be curable um, but I will take from it what I can because when I say I've been sick I was getting so sick and I couldn't even there was one day I had to have my friend drive me to places because I literally couldn't move I didn't feel comfortable driving myself that's how sick I was from the food I was eating and by getting food poisoning so many times they think that that really has damaged my stomach lining and all those other things because it has been so tough 
and I mean the power of my duas, the power of asking Allah to make it better and for me to get finally answers is all that I can ask for and be grateful for. I had to help run a fashion show, I had to still sew my clothes and meanwhile you guys, and I had to, I filmed stuff for you guys but you guys are going to see, I did my probate but I'm telling you I was completely shaking. I was shaking during the whole thing from anxiety and from sickness because I I still don't feel top tier. I'm tired. I'm my symptoms basically have been I'm nauseous, I'm vomiting, I'm tired all the time. My heart my esophagus burns a little bit. I'm complete I'm dizzy sometimes. I came in I just I and 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 like all of this has led me to be more depressed and it's made it so hard to want to do things to feel functioning and just to be a college student college is all about enjoying life and doing the things you want and also getting that degree but i can't lie to you guys and say that this hasn't been extremely tough i i would love to lie to you guys but i i'm so happy i'm not crying but i'm so sorry I really am. I really thought I'd be more consistent, but I'm finally getting answers and that's what really matters right now because I've never wanted to be that person who's like, I never wanted to be that person who like was always having something happening to them, but it feels like that's how it's been. Okay guys, you're going to see I cut to this part because basically a lot of things happened i don't want to spoil what's going to happen in the um i don't want to spoil what's going to happen in my next table talks which is basically going to be me explaining it's basically me going to be it's basically me going to be explaining to people like you know my freshman year in rap in a rap but basically the reason i've been gone isn't because of college it's because i've been so sick and i'm hoping that inshallah i'll be able to find i'll be able to find what what's up i will be able to find it it's just it might take me a sec um but i'm gonna figure out what's happening with my stomach we're pretty sure i have this thing and if that is what is true you guys will see that in this video and then after that you guys will be getting a bunch of new videos and you're gonna see oh that's my that's my asada alarm it's really funny because my asada is at five but that's like my reminder also is coming so um basically i've been really sick and i'm trying to get better but it's been really hard because i haven't really had the proper time to heal i'm back at home as you guys can see and so i'm just trying to heal and get my life together and figure everything out and so yeah but i have a couple of fun things coming up and so i'm really excited to be filming those things for you guys but yeah so thank you guys so much for watching this video if you did and i'm really sorry i haven't been able to post but i promise things are coming soon it's just been taking me a little bit i'm gonna post my eid short i'm gonna try and get those things out there for you guys because even though they're old they're still stuff and content and i hope you guys understand i was i didn't celebrate eid the way i wanted to I was sick as a dog that day, actually. I really was not feeling good, but I still had to push myself to get up and go to class and stuff. So, yeah. But without further ado, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys understand, and I hope you guys have a blessed day. And don't forget to make some dua for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Don't forget to, you know, do a good deed today. Don't forget to um, find something positive or get that prayer done. Don't forget to, you know, just... Just try at least one prayer. Just try one. And so without further ado, I hope you guys are um, subscribed. If you guys haven't, please subscribe. Please like. I promise I'm going to try and be consistent. But as I said, the keyword is trying. I probably will do a day in the life as somebody who's been really sick and as somebody who gets diagnosed with whatever I get diagnosed with. So without further ado, thank you guys so much and walaikum as -salam.